OK, so let's dive in. Don't worry about the fact that I'm demonstrating this on a Mac, by the way. The latest versions of Microsoft Word for both Mac and Windows are pretty much identical. And what I'm about to demonstrate holds true for versions of Word that go back five, even ten years. The only thing that may differ is the position of the buttons or various commands. But the principles definitely hold true and you can do this in older versions of Word too. The first thing to do is to change the font to some kind of sans serif. Now that's because sans serif stands out. It's ideal for presenting information, much more so than using a, a serif font, uh, which we've got here. Serifs, incidentally, are the little twiddly bits that uh, that you find um, on a actually on the, on the letters. Uh, so we want a sans serif font, uh, and you know how to do that. Uh, just select all the text and uh, select a sans serif font uh, like, say, Arial. So we'll do that up here. OK, so the next thing to look at is spacing. We need to space things out a little better. And again, select all the text, and we've got that already, and insert a small space before each row. And you do this via the Layout tab. So the Layout tab is here. Look for spacing, which is over here. And I'm just going to select uh, 12 points. And you can type that in directly or use these up and down arrows. So I use hit return and or we've spaced it out. So don't worry that these don't. some of these don't look uh, that central. We'll, we'll sort that out later on. Now let's look at that title. Most professional publications put titles outside the table itself. That's because it stands out more and it saves the table for the information itself. So just select the title, this one here, and then uh, drag and drop or cut and paste it to immediately outside the table. Now, in order to do that and make placing as accurate as possible, what you want to do is just switch on this little option here, which is in the Home tab, uh, which will show the, the, the paragraph returns and the, the, these little markers that show where the cells are. OK, so now I've got this paragraph return here, and I can very accurately just drag this down there and just insert it there. OK. Uh, and we can also um, edit the title at this stage uh, to make it stand out a little more. Um, so I'm just going to say um, Now at this stage we can also improve the title's appearance to make it stand out a bit more. I'm going to put it in bold. And again I'm going to uh, put a 12 point space above it uh, using the layout tab as, as you'll recall. Okay, looking good. Now you can try different settings. You don't have to uh, use 12 points. You can just uh, play with more or less using this these up and down arrows, okay. But I'm going to I'm going to stick with twelve. Now let's look at the words themselves for a moment uh, to see if we can tighten them up a little. This is important because getting rid of excess verbiage uh, and simplifying things will minimise the mental effort needed to uh, to read the information, and that will leave more mental capacity for the person reading it to interpret and take in what's there. So we can just change this to country of origin. And here. And now, now everything's on one line. And we can also uh, tighten some of these names up a bit. Incidentally, we can get rid of this uh, this row now. We, we don't need that. And uh, let's just make these column headings stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to highlight that entire row, and I'm just going to put those in bold. And we'll work on this bit uh, some more in a moment. But first, let's get rid of anything that's not helping to tell the story. Now, in this case, the lines separating the rows are not really doing anything. 
apart from separating the rows and the columns, but we can look at that in a minute. We, there are other ways to do that. For now, at least, we can just remove them. Now, to do that, select all. So just select, uh, in fact, select the entire table, okay, by clicking that symbol just there. And then select the table design tab, this one here. Now, this is where the slight difference is because in Word for Windows, the tab is just labeled design and there's a, another title for these two tabs just above it called table tools. But the tab it's in is exact, looks exactly the same and it's in the same place. Now we want to go to the borders button up here and we select no border. You see all of those lines have now disappeared. And then we select outside border. So you have to select no border first and then outside border. And that gets rid of the lines inside. Or you could even just leave it as it is and, uh, and just go with no border at all. It's, it's your choice. You can experiment with that. Now let's go back to those column headings. And uh, we're going to use the shading button now. Now this can be a little hard to find sometimes as its position um, is perhaps not that obvious, but um, in most versions it's, it's in the Home tab. So you go to the Home tab. Let's just uh, select that row. And it, in this uh, version it's just next to the Border button, which is just there. Okay, and you see we've got a, another Border button outside of the Tables uh, menu. So I'm going to shade this and I'm going to shade it to black. Now, incidentally, if you can't find that tab, just try moving your mouse slowly over the toolbar and you'll find that um, little helpful labels come up, uh, which that can make it easier to find some of these functions. Okay, so I've changed this to black and you can select a, an, an alternative dark color, but notice too how the text automatically uh, reverses out to white so that you can still read it. And now for the clever bit, differentiating uh, these, uh, these other rows. So uh, listen carefully to this bit. What you need to do is to uh, hold down the control key or the command key if you're on a Mac. And then with that key still held down, just highlight every other row. And you see how the rows, you can actually select multiple rows by doing that. Okay, and then you can release the keys. Don't click anywhere else. And I'm going to um, pick a light color for shading them. So again, we go back to the same place, use this drop down menu, and uh, I'm going to use uh, a blue. Okay, so let's let's try that one, see what that looks like. Yeah, I, I think that looks pretty good. And now finally, um, as you can see, we've got rid of all those black lines. And um, once, we, once we click outside of the table and take off any highlighting, um, and we could remove the, the symbol, this is what it will look like in the printed version. It's looking, looking pretty good. The final thing I'm going to do is just to insert some commas um, in any numbers that are larger than... Uh, than a thousand, um, just to make those a little bit more uh, obvious. Now let's just make sure that all the numbers are aligned properly. The first thing you need to do before you do that though is to make sure that all the text is set to um, to a range or a, to range left or aligned left, and that's this tab here, this little uh, icon here. So I just uh, set, just highlight the, the text and just make sure this, this icon is selected. You can see what it would look like otherwise. So we want it to be aligned left. And then what we need to do is select the first column of numbers. And uh, for this, for the next bit, we need to set some tabs. And uh, the tab icon is hidden in the ruler or it's in the ruler and the ruler is hidden at the moment. Um, so if we go to view, and we select ruler, it will appear. You probably know how to do that anyway. Now, even though you haven't actually typed any tabs in here, we're just gonna select the decimal tab, which looks a bit like a bit like this here, 
but with a decimal point below it. We've highlighted the first column and we're going to position a decimal tab roughly so that the, the numbers are centered. So just move this over a bit, you just, just have to experiment with this. And there we go. And then we'll just do the same with this column. Let's highlight again, position our decimal tab. And um, I think that looks pretty good actually. I think that's fine. And so now you see that all of the numbers are aligned on what would be a, a decimal point, this imaginary decimal point down here. And it's much, much easier to, to compare them. And that's it. Now, I know that may seem like a, a lot of steps, but none of them is complicated. And once you've done one, you'll find that making tables look professional in this way just gets easier and easier. And let's just look at what we started with uh, compared with uh, the final version. This really is a very easy way to totally transform your tables and uh, make all your documents look far more professional.